After I beat Elden Ring and surveyed my hard-won platinum from the highs of the virtual pedestal I had put myself on, I set out on my soul's journey to finally show Father Gascoigne and Lothric's most famous dancer who was boss. Minor spoilers, I was the boss, and it only took a few practice rounds to make them believe me, I swear. What I hadn't really considered was Sekiro. Sure, I had heard of it, and as is usually the case when From Software releases a Souls-type game, I had seen that people loved it so much that they wanted it to run for president. But I just figured it would be another Souls game from my list, right? Oh damn. Oh damn. Oh damn! And that is three oh dams. Oh damn! Sekiro is different from more traditional Soulsborne games in a number of ways. For one thing, your character actually has a name. Rather than being a blank slate like the Ashen One, or a Tarnished of No Renown, you're the Wolf, and you have a backstory, and other characters actually know who you are. Sekiro delivers a more coherent story than usual, with beautiful cutscenes and intelligible dialogue, and it's delivered in Japanese by default, which is just the stylish cherry on top. Sekiro changes a hell of a lot from the traditional Souls formula, and if it wasn't made by From Software, you'd be forgiven for not associating it with the brand. What does remain, however, is the trademark punishing difficulty. So what exactly is it that makes Sekiro so tough, even by normal Soulsborne standards? Well, for starters, you've got the pacing and the speed. When we hit the Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 era, things were given a noticeable speed boost. However, both games still featured stamina management, and this is where Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, sets itself apart. By completely doing away with stamina, both you and your enemies can now spam attacks without getting tired, though thankfully the bad guys do still have some gaps in their attack patterns. Sekiro instead gave us the posture meter, and the more you attack someone, whether they guard against you or not, the more this meter fills up. When it tops out, you get a stagger moment, like in the last few Final Fantasy games, and you can either insta-kill or do massive damage to your opponent. It is a literal game changer, and all of that muscle memory you have, all of those skills you honed over years of Dark Souls, well... Cool, whatever you say, Slick, but I need to tell you something about all your skills. As of right now, they mean precisely dick. Whether you're a Souls veteran, fighting against all of your finely tuned instincts, or someone brand new to games of this difficulty, you have to learn Sekiro from scratch. You can't just Google how to cheese this boss, or what build will melt that boss. For the first time ever, you truly had to get good, and this is the crux of what makes Sekiro so tough. If you're familiar with Souls games at all, you've almost definitely heard of Fighting Cowboy. He's a genuine YouTube legend, and my go-to guy if I ever get stuck in a Souls game. One of my favourite things about his work is that he leaves in the footage where he dies, and he's very open about not being the best at parrying. He shows that you don't have to be perfect to beat these games. Now a lot of people, myself included, never push too hard with parrying before Sekiro. If Cowboy wasn't worried about it, then I sure didn't need to be. I was always about shield up and fish for backstab, and I loved Elden Ring for adding guard counters. But in Sekiro, you have to guard and parry. It's not optional. You can't always dodge out of the way either. It simply doesn't work well enough anymore. Those unrelenting enemies who always seem to be able to just reach you, and you never have enough time to drink your healing ninja juice, they just do not seem to stop. Blocking and parrying is how you beat them. They never stop attacking, you never need to stop blocking. When you get a window, throw some of your own attacks in there, and eventually that posture meter of theirs will break, and this is the moment you've been waiting for. This is an incredibly basic summary of how this game works, and it represents something that took me many hours and countless deaths to figure out. Of course, it does get a lot more complicated than that, especially with boss fights. Most attacks can be blocked and countered, sure, but some can't, and you'll either have to dodge or jump, each of which has their own follow-up style attack. It's a bit like a rock-paper-stab style system, and once it clicks, you can absolutely see how some gamers get so good at Sekiro that they're on New Game Plus 30, and it's also where the age-old From Software tactic of learning an enemy's moveset kicks in. 
Sekiro very cleverly gives you a training dude in your hub area who explains all this to you and lets you practice to your heart's content. Of course, putting this into practice against multiple enemies and crazy bosses is an entirely different beast, but it's still cool that they gave us a safe space to try out all of these sweet ass ninja moves. And this leads into another big change that came with Sekiro. It's barely a Soulsborne game in the traditional sense, but it is absolutely a ninja game. The level in front of you isn't designed to be approached as a linear road. You can now use the buildings and fixtures to find higher ground and alternate routes, and you'll generally do a lot better if you use stealth to your advantage. Speaking of stealth, this leads nicely into the next major thing I want to talk about with Sekiro, and that's the bosses. Everyone struggles with the first boss in a Souls-type game. They don't even have to be the first real boss, but eventually you will hit a skill check, and you will probably get stuck. For me, it was this General Guard dude. I kid you not, I died to him more times than all other Souls-type intro bosses combined. But you know what I eventually thought of? And it worked so well, I made a point of using it every time I could after this. Stealth. Because the thing you gotta remember about Sekiro... Also, he's a ninja. Think like a ninja, get rewarded like one. This all plays so nicely in the next area too. Lots of grapple points at different heights, lots of places to hide, and you can even sneaky kill the big boy back here too. Jumping ahead a bit, remember the big old death noodle? Senior Mega Snack? Stealth baby, all about stealth. You wait for your moment, the tension builds, and then you strike. Okay, now we fight, yes? Well, actually... Run, bitch! Run! Now, going back to General Dushiro for a sec, I still had his second health bar to deal with, and when I eventually clicked that I had to stare right up in his face, be as unrelenting with him as he was with me, to conquer that fear of his blade using my own blade, well, obviously, he still murdered me a few times, but eventually, I won. Now, I'm not saying that after I had this revelation that every high-level enemy was a cakewalk, but one that I did find shockingly easy was Lady Butterfly. I had seen Sekiro appear on many an internet list before I played it, and I knew Lady Butterfly from Legend. This lady struck fear into the hearts of many a gamer, and is reported to have boosted the gaming accessories industry by 1 billion percent in replacement controllers. Actual figures may not be accurate. But apart from when she conjured all her ghost buddies, where I just hid behind some pillars mostly, I became the sworn enemy of her personal space, and I dropped her in two attempts. Make no mistake, Sekiro is hard. But like all FromSoft games, when you have your Neo is the one moment, it's worth all the work of getting there. I think the main issue with Sekiro's difficulty is accessibility. Souls games always give you build choice, Heck, even Bloodborne let you ride the lightning if you wanted to, but Sekiro made you a ninja. You are a ninja, and you will always be a ninja, and you've got to learn to be a ninja. This doesn't mean that there's only one way to play, though. We've already covered how you have access to stealth like never before, and you can pick off baddies one by one like a bloodier version of Batman. And what would Batman be without his gadgets, right? Well, as you progress, you will unlock some awesome tools. Personal favourites of mine include the spring-loaded axe, which obliterates shields, and the flamethrower, which made the chain dogger boss a lot less frustrating to deal with. Think of Sekiro like one character build, but with a lot more flexibility. Instead of leveling up stat numbers, here you select actual skills, some of which give you cool crowd control moves, whereas some are latent abilities that give you bigger parry windows and things like that. And my absolute favourite, the one that restores some of your health whenever you get a death blow. What is extra cool though, is how much muscle memory you'll pick up from Sekiro, and how confident it will make you with parrying when you go back to other Souls games. Remember these guys in Dark Souls 3? So much easier if you can parry them. Also, even though it's not a FromSoft game, Lies of P is as close to a Bloodborne successor as we've had, and what I've played so far has really benefited from my Sekiro experience. Playing through any Soulsborne will always improve your skills when you try another one, but none more so than Sekiro. It's as fast as it is unforgiving, but once you look at it the right way, I promise you, you can do it.
Once again, From Software have given us a shining yet brutally difficult example of what a video game can be, and how you can have an incredibly satisfying and rewarding experience if you persevere. Sekiro challenges you in new and exciting ways, and whilst it might take away things like build freedom, it introduces things like new moves, new tools, and entirely new ways to play. And there we have it Souls fans, that was my take on why Sekiro is so damn tough, but ultimately also so very very worth it. If you've enjoyed this video please consider giving it a like, and maybe even subscribing to my channel. And if you want to tell me your own Sekiro experiences, please do. God knows all the people who disagree with me are going to chime in, so why shouldn't you? Have a good one guys, remember that you've got this, and to be kind to each other. See you on the next one.